former general manager of the Los Angeles Sparks, back with another Points for Penny. Today, I want to I want to cover four things. One, the players entering the bubble this week. Two, the smart ring. Three, the players that opt out. And four, what I'm looking forward to this WNBA season. So let's start with one. We're one week away from the players ending the WNBA bubble down at the IMG Elite Facility in Florida. The coronavirus cases have spiked beyond belief there. It's interesting because I think the league is pre-testing the players before they get there, which I think is an awesome idea. They'll be tested before they get there, which is now. And the reason that is so awesome because 16 NBA players have already tested positive and, can, and will not be able to attend the NBA training camp on June the 30th. Instead, they will have to quarantine before they can join the team. So that's why pre-testing is always a great option and always should be done. Two, as soon as they land, July the 6th, all teams must be in Florida by July the 6th. They will be tested again. Every day they will be tested up until they start to practice, which I think is awesome. The league is trying to do everything they can to keep these players safe. If there was one suggestion that I would have suggested or that I can suggest now because it's never too late to, um, how do you say, add something that would be a positive. I think that the league should have thought about having a pool from 10 to 14 players that go in the bubble with all the other players that are on the teams. So when there's an injury or someone gets hurt and can't play, or God forbid, if someone catches the coronavirus and have to sit out, there would have, in this pool, you could have elected one of those players that's already in the bubble, already been quarantined. So you don't have to worry about bringing in a new player because of in injury and they test negative, but they were asymptomatic and all of a sudden they affect all the other players. So my suggestion to the league, because it's not too late, get that pool of 10 to 14 players, bring them in the bubble. So if they're needed, these are the players that all the teams will have the option to choose. If a player gets injured, or like I said, God forbid, have the coronavirus. Which brings me to number two, this smart ring right here. The smart ring, the smart ring is supposed to be able to test for the pre-coronavirus symptoms three days before anybody is affected. And the three things that it measures is temperature, pulse, and respiratory rate. Now I've been hearing that all the NBA players will have the option to wear this ring. Well, I want to say to the NBA, I hope that the women have the same option. As much preventative measures and smart devices that we could give the women, it would also help the women stay safe. So if the men have it, I pray that the women have the option as well. Which brings me to my third point, and this is what I love talking about. You know, the players had the option to play or not to play. And wow, there's some heavy hitters that chose not to play, either for health concerns or they want to pursue their, their social justice issues, but it's some heavy hitters. Let's start with Maya Moore, Jackwell Jones from Connecticut. Latoya Sanders and Natasha Cloud from Washington, Christy Tolliver and Cheney O'K okay from the Sparks, Aguma K, excuse me, Cheney Aguma K from the Sparks, Renee Montgomery and Tiffany Hayes from Atlanta, and Rebecca Allen from New York. Now I want to say Tiffany Hayes and Renee, I really love what Chris Dianco have done down there in Atlanta. I was looking forward to seeing you guys play. You guys were loaded at the guard position. And even though you're going to be missed, I mean, with the, uh, the addition of Courtney Wims and, your number, and Atlanta's number one draft choice, Kennedy Carter, 
that's still going to be one of the teams to watch. And that's just to name a few of the heavy hitters so far that have dropped out. It's still going to be a great season. Everybody should be watching. Now, number four, what I'm looking for this season in the WNBA. Here's what I'm looking forward to. Seeing the GOATs come back to play. And who are they? Sue Bird and Diana Taurasi and Angel McCautry. And oh no, I didn't forget the return of Miss Brianna Stewart. But I'm really looking forward to seeing Angel with her new team, the Las Vegas Aces. I think she's going to be amazing. Sue Bird and Diana, who's not had an incredible year. And I want to encourage everybody out there. If you haven't watched the WNBA, watch it. Because you never know when some of these players won't be playing anymore. So here's an opportunity to help the WNBA by supporting them with the ratings, getting a chance to see all your favorite players play because you just never know what the future holds. Then the interesting thing that happened, I spoke on my last points to Penny and I told all the players that were waived to stay ready because there have been some injuries. And just like I'm talking, just like I'm discussing now, some players have opt out. I think Mike Tebow, that championship coach, congratulations, Mike. What I mean by that, Natasha Cloud elected not to play in Latoya Sanders. He went and got him another vet named Essence Carsons. And I had the luxury of being Essence Carsons' general manager. What he's picked up is what I call a professional player. I already know she's going to be ready to go. Always ready to go, on time, will do anything the coach asks. Great pickup, Mike. Bill and Beer, another one. Now, Bill, I couldn't stand you when the Sparks used to play against you because, my God, those were some great battles, some for the ages. But one thing I say about Bill, nothing ever gets him down. Kelsey Plum get hurt, he goes and signs Alexis Bentley. And I know she's going to do well in his system because that's one thing I'll say about Bill, too. Bill is a great coach. And I'm looking forward to watching the product with Angel McCautry and what he had last year. I look for them to do spectacular things. A couple of friends of mine asked me last night, Penny, who's going to win the championship? And this is what I said. Well, first, I want to reiterate from another point for Penny, what I said and who's going to be victorious in winning this championship. It's going to take four things. One, which team has the most players in shape? Two, a strong mindset. Three, whichever team has the best leaders on the floor. I already know the coaches are going to do what they do, but they have to have leaders on the floor, leaders in the locker room. Four, attitude. Because it's going to take a positive attitude because everything isn't going to go right down there. And you're going to have to be able to adjust on the fly. The team that can do all four, of those thing, all four of those things will be the champion. So now here's my prediction to who will win the championship. Nope, I'm not going to tell you here. I'm going to tell you on my next, my next podcast or my next YouTube from Points for Penny. So if you like what I've said so far, you know what to do. Press the button below. I'll see you next week for my predictions on who's going to win the championship.